All right, so welcome to part two of our lesson on two-dimensional arrays. Um, what I'm going to have you do in this part is do some notes with me. And to get the notes, um, they will be out on Schoology. Right, so you're looking for this thing called two-dimensional array notes.java. So just load it in um, to your editor and then fill in the notes with me uh, as we go. All right, so um, it will look a little bit different on Schoology than it does right now because I'm still building everything, but that's the file you've got to find. Okay, and then it should look like this when you get it in there. It's got the main and then it's got some comments and we're going to fill in the comments. I would, as always, recommend that you try this stuff before just watching my solutions. So if you want, honestly, in previous years, I just let the kids go and work on it for a while. And then whenever they got stuck, I'd kind of give them some hints or whatever. So if you want to just start by trying um, you know, especially these first few things, you can look back at the first video or the PDF notes, right? Those PDF notes should be out there on Schoology now too. Um, you can reference those um, and then try to do this as much as you can on your own. And then I'll go through these first, what is that, five that are up there now. So try them and then unpause this video. Okay, um, I probably should have 2D array of ints. Probably should put that on there. I'll fix it um, later. But, uh, okay, so to create a 2D array, I'm going to type int bracket bracket twice because it's two-dimensional arrays, and then call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it array, okay, and then I'm going to type um, new, and then I'm going to do the type again, which is int bracket 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 again, and now I have to put the rows first. So three rows, four columns would look like that. By default, they will all be zeros to start. All right, so now if I want to change the value at row index 2 and column index of 1 to be 7, I would just do array and then bracket bracket and specify row 2, which is really the third row, but it's the second index because it goes 0, 1, 2, and then column index 1 and set that to be 7. Okay, so and now I want to do a different one, so I'm just going to do the name of the array, bracket bracket, Except I messed it up big time, bracket. And then uh, row index 3, column index 2, and I'm going to set that to be 6. Boom, that's it. Okay, and then to do number of rows, remember you do, uh, let's see, I think it's just array.length. Okay, so if I do array.length, because rows is how, remember that it's an array of arrays, so each row is an array. So if I do array.length, that'll be the number of rows. Okay, so I'm going to sys out print array.length. Okay, and then number of columns, remember you just get one of the rows and display its length, right? Because each row is an array, and so if you get that one array and then do its length, that'll be how many columns. So it's going to be array and then just do any position. I'm going to do zero dot length. And that'll get me how many columns there are, right? And those are good to remember, especially when you start doing your loops. Okay, so uh, next up then is, oh, so I'm passing in a 2D array. Uh, I just called that array. So anyways, uh, whatever you named your 2D array, uh, we want to have a method because we'd probably want to do this a bunch of times where we'd want to display a 2D array of ints. So um, I did the method call here and you just have to pass in your array. And then I print a return here to make sure the spacing looks okay, but pass it in. And so the, the actual method heading I created in here already. All right. So it just, uh, it's called display 2D array. It doesn't return anything because we just want to print out all the values. And then we're going to pass in a 2D array. Okay. So the next part would be to see if you can actually come up with how you would display this. All right. Um, and a hint would be you've got to use... Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd let you think here for a second. What do you got to use? Okay, and the answer is you have to use nested loops. You have to do a loop through the rows and a loop through the columns and then a, display the ith and j, or the row column position, one at a time, and then put your return in the right spot. So pause the video and see if you can do this. This is a pretty tricky one, but give it a shot. Um, nested loops actually end up being super common with 2D arrays because you're going to have a loop for the, for the rows and a loop for the columns. All right, so pause the video and give it a shot. 
Okay, so my outside loop, remember you normally do the rows on the outside. So I'm gonna do four into row, and I'm gonna start it at zero because our row start index at zero. And then I'm gonna do row less than the number of rows, right? So that would be, remember number of rows is array dot length. I guess it's called values down here, but I'm gonna do values dot length, right? And I wanna stay less than that because the length is normal, right? If you have five rows, the index will go zero to four, but the length will actually be five. So I just have to stay less than length, plus plus row. All right, and then I'm gonna do four int column equals zero. And then column is gonna stay less than the number of columns. So I'm gonna do the 2D array values, and then I'm gonna do a position. And since they all have the same number of columns each time, I'm just gonna do position zero dot length so however many um columns there are and i need plus plus column this would actually probably be a little bit better if i put row here because if a row had a different number of columns it'd probably be better to put that here but if you want to do zero most i think all the ones for our purposes will be rectangular they won't have like jagged number of uh columns each time all right, and then I'm just gonna sys out print um, the array. So I'm gonna do the row and column position. Okay, and so the problem right now is this will just print them all in one big line. So I probably should add curly braces here because I might need a few more lines. So I'll add a curly brace for that loop, curly brace for this one, all right? And then I gotta think, I don't wanna print a return here. Right, I just want to put like spacing, so maybe I'll do a slash T for a tab. And then I don't want to print my return until here, right? Because this basically prints across one row, bloop, 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 and then you print the return at the end. So you want to go all the way across the row, then a return, next row, then a return, next row. So I put this on the outside so that I print a row here, then do a return and go to do, to do my next row. All right. So let's give this thing a shot and see if it works. And of course it doesn't. We have an error. Index out of bounds, of course. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So all I did is make the array index out of bounds. Oh, look at that. Mr. Westpatel messed it up again. Um, well, I will fix this in your notes. So basically, our rows go, we have three rows here, but they're going to be index 0, 1, 2. And so basically, we don't have a row index 3. So maybe I'll have to change this in the notes to be 2. And then this should be a 2. Sorry for the confusion. Um, yeah, that'll make more sense now. Let's try it again. Okay, so now I'm uh, printing out the rows and the columns here, and then here's what the actual array looks like at this point. Okay. Um, so final two things for you to try here is we did, this is the way to initialize one where it's all zeros, but you can also initialize it with specific values. So see if you can do that. That code's pretty tricky, but again, reference the PDF notes um, or the, the earlier video. And then also see if you can do a method. So you've got an example of one method to so do another one, but this time it's gonna sum the uh, all the elements in the array, all right? So pause the video and give those a shot. Okay. So um, I'm gonna do another array of int. So I'm gonna do int bracket, 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 and call it array, uh, maybe let's call it numbers or something to name it something different. And then when you do this, um, I do a curly brace and then do my another curly brace and do my first array. So remember a 2D array is just an array of arrays. So there is this array right there. And that's my first element in the big 2D array. So then I'm going to put a comma to do my next element. And then I usually line them up like this, like they did in the notes from before. I'm going to line them up like this and say, okay, 
here's my second element in the overall 2D array, which is a mini array, a 1D array, right? Put a comma there and then go down and do my last one. So 0, 0, 1, right? And then uh, that's my last element in the 2D array. So I'm going to end the 2D array and put a semicolon there, right? And that's pretty tricky, but um, hopefully it makes sense. And I think kind of line them up this way makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so for my method that, that uh, returns the sum of all the elements, I'm literally going to copy this because it's the same looping all the time, right? So basically, I'm going to do this one called sum 2D array. I'm going to name it something like that. It takes in a 2D array. And this is super common again. I just go, I want to go to each position, except I don't want to print them out this time. I just want to add them to my sum. But it's the same loop. Right, here's the row loop, here's the column loop, right? You'll do it a bunch. That's why you have to remember the number of rows and the number of columns, right? And then instead of these system out prints, I'm gonna get rid of these, I'm just gonna add them to a sum. So I'm gonna do a sum variable, set it equal to zero, and then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do sum, and then I'm just gonna reference that position again. So I'm gonna do values at position row, position column. Right, which is what I was printing out before, but now I'm just going to add it. So sorry, I need a plus equals so that I add it to my sum. Sum starts at zero, add each spot, and then once both four loops are done, I've done finding the sum, so now I'm just going to return that sum. Right, so this one's not a void method, right, because it's not just printing, it's actually returning stuff, so I've got to return an int. Okay, and then to use it, I've got to call it back up in main. So I'm just going to do the name right here and pass in my 2D array, which can be any 2D array. It should work because we did it generically down here. And then it's going to return an int. Okay, so the method call looks a little different than this one because this one didn't have a return type. So here I'm going to do like int sum, right, is equal to whatever is returned by that method. So I call the method pass in the array I want to sum, which is just my array. Actually, maybe I'll do numbers, right? So that should be three, right? Because if you just sum all these up, it should just be three. So I'm going to sys out print the sum is, okay, and so that's how you would call that method, right? Restore the result and then print it out. Okay, so let's hit rock and roll here and the sum is three, that looks good. And just to make sure it works, let's do like negative eight and put a 12 right here, or something. So that would be, it should be seven, I think. If I'm doing that math in my head right, it does say sum is seven. Okay, so I'll change that back to normal. Okay, so that is it. Um, save these notes, right? Because they're good to have, especially about how do you create them and reference them. Um, how do you get the rows column? So if you get stuck later on a 2D array, you can look back at these notes. Thanks for watching.